Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today we are looking at the chakra system. So we're going to go through the main seven energy centres through the body. We'll pick a rune and a card for each one. I'm also working today with uh, these cards which are called the Sacred Feminine Oracle. But they're relatable to masculine as well. So just because it says the Sacred Feminine doesn't mean it's not relatable to males too. So we will see what we get from that um, for each centre, um, bringing it together. So this is just accessing what is within each centre with you at the moment. So this isn't going to resonate with everybody, um, but if it is starting to resonate with you, or maybe you want to just look at each one and see what it speaks to you. Because sometimes you can look at these videos and you're a bit like, you know, well that doesn't resonate, but that kind of does. So take what resonates with you, but don't try and make something fit, basically. Um, and what I would suggest to you is that my words will give you something, hopefully, that aligns with what's going on in your world right now. So just keep listening, listen to the end and see what you get. And if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing to my channel, I love watching, um, seeing the comments as well that you guys put, so, uh, so thank you so much for that. I know I always try and respond with a little heart emoji or something. So let's begin. Let's start with the root chakra. So this is the chakra, the center, the havel, whatever you want to call it. It's basically an energy center that sits right at the base of the body. So imagine it right at the base of your spine. And what it does is it contains in there all of the aspects of you that are about your primal will, your safety, your security, your trust basically in life, in this world and it's your direct connection to Mother Earth. This is our root. So let's see what is going on in there because this center, it can be, see in what I've worked with before is cauldrons and we would say that this area would be your cauldron of warming. And this cauldron, if you imagine, it's a vessel within you that gets full with life force when you're born. And as you go through life, this life force, this um, cauldron, if you like, gets tilted, gets tipped. And some of this life force can start to pour out based on, you know, traumatic experiences that you have. And when I say traumatic experiences, what I mean is, you know, when you're a child, you might get shouted at or something might happen at school where you're embarrassed or you're afraid. All of these things, even though they seem quite minor, they weren't minor to you when you were that small. And it can cause parts of this life force energy to spill. Um, and we didn't really know back then, sort of like, you know, how to keep that flow of energy coming in. We weren't really working with that. We were very much in the physical plane. So as you go through life, this centre can be impacted and affected by those things that have happened to you through your life. So let me see what we've got going on in your root chakra right now. Manas. So there's an awareness there. So for many of you, you are doing some um, soul searching, I feel. You are doing some work on patterns and things from your past, potentially. Looking at the patterns of your childhood. So if this is resonating with you, what I've just been talking about, this is definitely for you. So the information you're going to gain from this is definitely for you. So you may have bouts of feeling low mood, um, perhaps lethargy sometimes, um, just feeling like you're not fulfilling what you would really like. And maybe when you do have time on your own, you kind of don't really want to do anything, is what I'm picking up from this. You're feeling like a bit of a low energy, but you are trying to understand where that's coming from and why. And you're trying to understand what from the past is affecting you in your present right now and is going to impact your future. So, oh, I do see somebody that is, you know, paying a lot of attention to that and becoming very aware of the imprint that you and the impact that you have on your environment, on your world, on the people around you. And so congratulations if that is you, because it's not easy to do that. We call that what shadow work looking at the parts that we reject about ourselves, possibly because you've been told that that's not a good quality to have, or there's, you know, just not feeling your worth basically, but you are on a journey right now where you are 
finding your worth. So well done. It's not an easy journey. Let's see what card resonates with you in this centre today. Invasive. I feel for some of you, you're actually working on maybe a mother or father wounding here. So what that means is that there's been things that have affected you from your parents when you were growing up. And one of these things has been about somebody um, being quite invasive, maybe intrusive into your world. So maybe you're quite a reclusive person, maybe you're quite a private person, but there's always been somebody, and I feel like it's more of a feminine energy that I'm picking up on this rather than a masculine. Uh, so more like a mother or an auntie or a sister or somebody that is kind of being invasive in your world, you know, almost like, um, somebody trying to constantly point fingers at you or, um, you know, you say you want to do something and this person's asking a million and one questions to try and trip you up to see like, oh, well, you, you know, do you really know what you're talking about? Do you really know anything? And there's a bit of illusion around this because... I feel like what you are trying to access now, what you're seeing, and this is part of the journey we have in shadow work. You may be looking at your parents and thinking sort of like, well, well, they did this and they did that and they're narcissistic and they're this, that and the other. But when you look deeper into it, it's just sort of like, well, where was that person in their life at that point? Maybe they were reacting to you in that way or treating you in that way because they thought they were doing the best for you from where they were. And we can only ever work from the level that we're at, can't we? And I feel like for many of you, you've kind of leveled up a little bit here. You've done some work on yourself. You've done a lot of inner work. So when you meet back with the people from your past or your family, you're finding it difficult to connect with these people because you're not on the same level. And they are kind of invasively plucking at you, trying to find that version of you that they remember. So you may be going through a time like that now where you're perhaps feeling a little bit insecure in yourself because of this invasive kind of questioning that's going on. Um, but what is being shown here is about you just staying in your power. Just, you know, keep being you. You don't have to answer people's questions. You don't have to run out the door to prove your point. So let's see what Tarot is telling us about this. Well, that was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> Okay, we have the King of Coins on here. So very, very much about being in your power, staying in your power. This is quite a very stable and secure energy. So it's a good one to have for the root chakra. So whatever it is that you've been doing and the awareness that you've been finding around these family environments, around this particular person I'm feeling, this particular feminine in your life that's got this power over you or has had the power over you, that is changing now because you are becoming more confident. You may be being told that you're greedy or you're selfish or you're, you know, you're not putting enough effort in when actually you are putting effort in, but into your own needs right now, because that's what's needed. And what these people will come to understand is that actually in you doing that, you are helping them to heal as well. Okay. So that is what we have for you in your root chakra. So keep working on that. Keep working with that energy because it's it's a deep one. And actually when we activate and work with the root chakra and we put things, the pieces of the puzzle back together, it actually gives us a stability that helps our like financial flow as well. It helps our abundance to flow. Um, there's a lot of work you can do around that to bring wealth into your life by working with the root chakra. But we can talk more about that if you wanna get in touch and do any work around that. Quite happy to do that. Let's see what our sacral is talking about then now. So the sacral center sits here. It's like the sexual organs um, and it relates to family, relationships. This is the area, this is why a lot of people when they're going through something in a family environment or you know, in a toxic environment or something karmic, it, you get stomach aches or IBS, that kind of thing, because it all comes from this center, okay? Or you may get backache or a feeling around there, maybe something in your kidneys. Um, so this center, it holds a lot of our pain and wounding, not 
bad things. It also holds a lot of our feelings of um, desire and passion as well. But it's a kind of getting a balance through that. So we can work with our sexual energy, our creative energy which stems from this center. This is the first place that is made when we are born. This is, you know, our first attention basically. This is where we, where our ideas, our inspiration, our creativity all comes from this center, okay? Um, it's a nice feeling, isn't it? Placing your hand around your stomach area, around that sort of space, you know? I see people when I'm doing yoga sessions and they get into Shavasana and people put their knees up and place their hands on their tummy. You are nurturing yourself. And this is a center that, you know, if you didn't feel nurtured when you were a child or you didn't, you haven't felt nurtured through your life, there may be a discord here. There may be an energy that's kind of like stifled or blocked. It can also be the same if you're not really living out your true purpose. So there's a lot of purpose and responsibility that is surrounded in this centre as well. So let's see what our sacral centre is talking about today. Fehu, beautiful. The thing is with Fehu, Fehu is a very abundant um, room. It's the first rune and it basically relates to, you know, how abundant you are, how fortunate you are. And what I'm getting from this is that this has come through all of the work that you've done on yourself. Right now, the person I'm talking to is feeling very fortunate in their family life. You're feeling very blessed. You're feeling in a good place. Even if there's still chaos around you, there's still things going on, you are, and I hear and see somebody thanking God or thanking spirit for everything that they have in their life. That's beautiful. But with Fehu, there is always this fear of losing it. Like if you're in a good place right now, there's this waiting for the other shoe to drop and thinking like, well, how long is this going to last? Because it might not last. So there's this kind of like balance being sort of energy to it. That's, you know, a fear, fear of like, I can't keep this up. I can't keep this going. Let's see what the sacred feminine is saying for us right now. We're in our sacral center. These cards smell weird. Let's see. Okay. Psychic. Now that's interesting that this would be in the sacral center. So you are observing things right now. I feel like you are starting to see something, especially around your family environment, around the people around you. And it feels to me like people are kind of reaching out to you for advice. People are reaching out to you um, to help them grow because you are speaking something right now. You are holding a space for a group of people, I feel, in a positive way. And it's almost like the words that you speak or the way that you speak is actually creating release in people. Maybe a lot of people are welling up around you and you're finding you're hugging a lot of people, making them feel safe, making them feel good. Now, what that's doing is it's actually embracing your own purpose you are in a place right now where you are feeling purposeful, where you are feeling like you are holding that space for people. It's a very, very beautiful energy that you've got working in your sacral right now. You've moved through a lot of gunk from that space, from your past, and you've gone, I'm done with that, not that anymore. What you're looking at now is creating space here, keeping boundaries around things that kind of stuff stuff into there. You've let go of a lot of things that aren't yours. So with this psychic and the Fehu room, what you're doing is you are seeing your life force energy as very wealthy. You are starting to see your worth and bring it in to the world. Okay, we had manas here at the root center. So this is the thing, the gifts that you bring out into the world. It's starting to be seen and 
Or what's that thing? I think it's Spider-Man, but it's like with great power comes great responsibility. And that is where you are right now, is you are recognising my words carry a lot of weight. They carry power. The way I am towards people carries a lot of weight, carries a lot of power. And you're starting to realise, it's almost like the teacher within you that's starting to come out. So for many of you, I feel like you may be starting to think about becoming a teacher of some form, whether that's a spiritual teacher or going into teaching children. But it's something around that that is a very fortunate energy. Um, it's bringing you new opportunities, I feel. You're very open in your sacral centre. So I'm guessing for many of you, you're feeling like a bit of a lightness around yourselves right now, you're feeling refreshed. Perhaps you've gone and done some um, meditation work or been for healing recently around that centre. If you have been having problems in that area, say especially for any feminines, um, going through anything um, with your cycles, just know that that's going to change from this point. You've done a lot of work around that. And actually in doing that, you are also healing your daughters. Some of you need to know that. I can see a young girl around about 11 or 12. You are bringing a lot of healing for them in their feminine energy. So let's see what... Well, aren't you the lucky one? Because we didn't get that many in the root chakra. <laughs> okay, we've got the Six of Pentacles on here. So, you have found a way of balancing giving and receiving. And it's almost like, I do feel very boundaryfied around this centre. It's like you've decided, I'm not going to let people just take my energy. I will give my energy, but I need to have some form of exchange. And you are keeping a balance with that. I definitely feel you're keeping a balance with that and the seven of wands came out with that as well which also represents this energy of like you've got a shield around you maybe you leave the house every day and go like put my shield around me great spirit keep me safe um you're not really letting anything come near you unless it is for your greater good is what i'm picking up from this you've really switched on your sacral center and you are not misusing this energy anymore if in the past you have had experience where sexual energy has been misused as well, you have really done some work around that and you are, you know, that energy you now see as more sacred and you are being very careful about where you put that energy and who gets to have that energy. Ooh, page of wands. There's an inspired action about to happen here. So if you're starting to feel butterflies and things at the moment, I think for you, in the past, you felt energy and you thought it was excitement when actually it was being triggered as a, a trauma response. But now you're starting to recognise, you know, what it is that can drive this forward. There's enthusiasm here. You are feeling inspired right now to do something. Um, I would say, though... There's an energy of, so we've got as well, Eight of Swords and Ace of Wands. Oh God, it's like something having a power over you. But even so, there are still things that hold you back in that area. And I feel like that could be family orientated. You've had to distance yourself from many people recently to figure out where you're at and what you're doing. And... The Ace of Wands is kind of like, um, you know, you, you know that things have to change with the people in your life and around you, but it's bringing in a new idea, it's bringing in new opportunities, you are, you've manifested this for yourself, you are manifesting now this way forward for yourself. So that is what's going on here in the cycle, you're very switched on right now, so any creative outlets and things that you are looking into, stay on track with that, stay with it, okay? You are responsible for you, nobody else. No one's coming to save you, you have to do this for you. <laughs> okay, this could turn out to be a very long reading, you know, I've just realized how long I'm taking with this and I've only done two chakras. <laughs> so let's have a look at your solar plexus. Where are we going with that? 
solar plexus energy. Isa. So your solar plexus, this is the seat of your power. This is like the very centre of you. You know, if you're feeling a little bit threatened and we do this kind of business, you know, we try and hide ourselves. People who are very tall, sometimes they kind of like try and hide that area. Um, so it's it's a place where your ego sort of resides as well, or where your identity is grown from. And that can be grown from, you know, the experiences we have in these two bottom ones as to where it comes up into our solar plexus to be what we express and how what we believe about ourselves. Now with Isa, this kind of says to me that there's a space here of being very present with yourself. You are, and it does actually, Isa can be related to the ego as well. So I do feel like we are centering and looking around the ego self at this point. So you are very present in the moment right now. I can see somebody working with yoga, um, Maybe you're working a lot with pranayama right now, so sort of like in a meditation state. You are slowing down things and observing yourself. There's a lot of introspection going on. So it's almost like you've put a shield around this centre to keep yourself safe from the things that are going on around you in your world. So I'm going to pick what card goes with that. Oh... That's interesting. So we've got invasive again. So that makes sense because we had this in your in your chakra, the root chakra. So again, there's this energy of people around you trying to pull parts of you out of your ego that they recognise that you've kind of um, alchemized and you've you've worked through things to you know, those, you've kind of grieved for those versions of yourself that they just don't exist anymore. But there are people around you that can't quite get to grips with that. So this is about, I feel like you've kind of put yourself on hold at the moment with the people around you, some connections that you've been involved in. You're stepping back and observing yourself right now and keeping yourself safe. You are, you know, being very aware of the illusions around you. There's a real psychic energy that you're working with through all of your centres at the moment. And you are starting to notice when you step back and you just watch the circus, you know, it still carries on. So it was never you in the first place. Yeah. You're still seeing what's happening. I'm seeing a lot of twos. That's number 22. And you've just got 2244 on the clock as well. Okay, so we've got the hermit energy in here, which it's in the reverse position. So this is a withdrawn energy. This is somebody that's withdrawing from things. And I do feel there's a little element of loneliness with this. It's loneliness, but actually you know it's necessary on your journey right now. You know you're not alone. You sense and feel spiritual energy around you. But there's a feeling of like, will I ever find my people? Will I ever find the people that resonate with me and that are also doing this work on themselves? Those people are out there. And if you connect with me, I can connect you with other people that are going through similar things. I like to do that. I like to create a network of people that are feeling these feelings, isolated in their own environments or places. But you can connect with other people that are going through pretty much the same as you. And you can work with that. This too shall pass. You are going to come through this, but it's actually very clever of you. It's right of you to protect this space right now because there's healing that's taking place on there. And it's like with any wound, it takes time to scab over. It takes time to, you know, you've had to cleanse it. You've had to look at what shards of things were in there and pick them out. And now it's time for that healing process. So that does take time. For you to be present with yourself so that's what we're working with there on your solar plexus so let's move now into the heart chakra shall we so your heart center is one that kind of integrates the bottom centers and the upper centers so it's like it keeps everything together it filters in the energy from the above and below so it's a very important center and one that perhaps is more misunderstood than any of the centres, really. Because everybody calls it, you know, oh, it's just about unconditional love. It's, it's love and, 
No, it's not just, well, say love is the source, isn't it? But it's not just about that. There's other elements as well to this of feeling nurtured, feeling like you belong. There's very existential things that can go on around the heart chakra. Ha, <laughs> Athala, which is quite interesting for this to come out in your heart centre. So this is about family usually. It's inherent gifts. So gifts that we inherit from our ancestors. Now, whenever you do um, drumming journeys and things like that, I've done drumming journeys before with people where it takes you on an ancestral level. And one of my clients mentioned this the other day about how the tears that you cry from that kind of journey are not the same as the tears you cry just, you know, if, if something's happened in your physical reality. It's a different kind of cry. And it's almost like a grieving for a life that you once knew or that you once had, maybe a past life. And there's an energy of, for you, a feeling your heart centre of like soul regression and within that soul regression right now is where you're at. You're calling in ancestral energy. And this ancestral energy is creating almost like an army around you of protection. So if you didn't already know that, just know that it is there. Your loved ones, they might be sending you signals or messages through music or through things that you've seen or even scents as well. I'm sensing somebody can smell a perfume or maybe tobacco or something just every now and then that is reminding you of people that made you feel warm and comfortable um, and secure in your life at some point. So that's what's happening here in your heart centre. It's a very nostalgic energy that's going on in there. Let's see what card we have for the sacred feminine. You have several cards, but I'm going to go with this one. So we've got guide. So like we were saying before, this ancestral energy, you, your heart is being pulled in a direction. Now we had the psychic card around the sacral center. So these two are working together here to give you information and advice, to bring you into a place. Um, yeah just had a little inkling then of the moon card coming with this and it does look like the moon on the top there as well so this can be again about illusions i feel like there is a lot of illusion around you or perceived illusion around you and you are trying to work through that so that's why you are putting yourself on hold right now keeping yourself back because you're not sure what's elusive and what isn't and they're asking you to trust your guides, trust this ancestral energy that is trying to connect with you, trying to bring information through for you. So you may want to at this time, if you're not already, take yourself on a meditation, take yourself to Yagdrasil, to the World Tree, take yourself to a place where you can sit with your ancestors and receive this guidance, receive this information. For many of you, you're already trusting that process and allowing yourself to be guided. But for some of you, you're not sure whether to trust it or not. And I have to tell you, unless you trust it, you're not going to gain those rewards. You're not going to achieve what you're looking for. You have to just trust it. But trust me, when you trust it, you will know. And things do change. Things do happen. You are guided way more than you realise. You will never, ever, ever doubt it ever again. Okay? I kid you not. Drop a comment when this happens for you because you let go and you trusted. Okay, we have the three of wands. So you are embarking on a journey right now. You are getting into a situation of preparing for going, doing something. We have the ace of swords as well. So this is like... It's interesting because in your heart centre, I would expect this one to be more for the throat centre because it's about kind of like communication and clarity. So there's a real clear message around your heart centre at this time that is about this move forward. So for some of you, this may be an opportunity to go travel. This may be an opportunity to take a journey that you have been hoping to embark on 
you're being guided to do that. Your guides want you to take that journey that's calling to your heart, okay? You will know what that is, so take that journey. If you did wanna do a personalized reading, we can look deeper into what that journey is and how you go about taking it. But that is in your heart center right now. That is beautiful. Okay, so your throat chakra then. Let's see what's going on in your throat. So the throat chakra is all about our communication, but not just communication on the physical realm, also communication with ourselves and with our higher spirit and spirit guides. And we have Issa again. So your throat and your solar plexus are communicating at this time in terms of, you know, we are working on something. We are working on creating this version of yourself that you want to bring into the world. So you may find that at the moment you aren't really communicating very well or you are purposefully holding back communication from certain individuals in your life. That's smart. That's smart. Okay, so don't feel bad about that if that is what you are doing. And the fact is, if, if these people care about you, if they understand you and truly believe in you, they won't beg of you or ask you. They will just support you. Okay. And we have the oracle. So, oracle on here. This is an energy of, I'm kind of getting um, a little bit like a chariot sort of energy with this. Again, that oracle, it's like you, I feel like you can be the oracle sometimes. And the way that you are talking, it's almost like people are looking at you like, where did that come from? Why did you say that? You are becoming a channel, I feel, many of you for spirit. You are sort of speaking out in a different way to how you normally would. For some of you, you've gained your voice back because of the inner work that you've done in these centres. You know, that feminine we were talking about that kind of had that power over you, the invasive energy. You've gained your voice back from that person, I feel. And in doing that, you are now able to speak in a way that you've always needed to, but never did before. Um... So that's a really, you know, you are taking a journey right now. You are definitely going into a journey that I feel is taking you places and you are speaking out more. You are, you know, communicating that more. The success on the horizon based around these centres. Let's see then. So what's going on in your throat centre on here? The magician, what were we just saying? <laughs> this is alchemy, this is manifestation, this is somebody, you know, working on a lot of things to bring them into fruition, to bring them into the world. There is power in it and you are kind of like wielding a skill. And I do feel for many of you, it's coming from your voice. It's coming from you actually being able to speak. Um, so perhaps you are becoming a public speaker. Or like we said before about teaching, maybe you are becoming a teacher. Um, there is an element of that that I can foresee here with you. There is success in this journey that you are on. Definitely, you've done so much work on yourself. Okay, I'm going to look now into your, where are we, brow. So we're going into the third eye now, Ajna. Let's have a look and see. So this is the center of our intuition, you know, that inner teacher, the one that guides us, but we don't always listen to. Okay, and we have a Thala again for this one. So both your throat and your brow are working together with communicating what you are intuiting. So. As you get information coming in from your higher self, you are now actively bringing that information out into the world. That links you back to Manas at the bottom here, which is bringing those gifts out into the world. You are possibly having dreams of ancestral things. So this could be dreams where in the dream you are not yourself, but you know you are you, if that makes sense. And you are going about things with people that you don't know or you don't recognise, but in the dream you do know them. Um, the dream is maybe blurry, I'm guessing, and you're only getting snippets of it. 
but you are doing some work in the background here through your throat chakra and your brow chakra um, and it is helping you to have these intuitive downloads to manifest what it is that you are looking for. So when you go to bed, bring an intention to mind of your next step forward or ask for the information to come through in your dreams is what I'm getting from here. Aligned. So you are well and truly aligned with your guides, with spirit, with the energies around you. So basically just go about your day because Everything that will happen to you through that day is aligned with your highest spirit, with where you need to be and what you need to be doing. There is so much within this that is blossoming now within you. You are learning to be guided by your intuition. You are learning to trust that communication with yourself. And it's kind of having a bit of a, a waterfall effect through your centres, okay? And it's like looping back around. You are constantly working with all of your centers now bringing this into fruition so much alignment going on there wonderful and this is it's 42 on there so i would make that into six which is the lovers card so there's a lot of choices for you to, to make here um you know it's it's definitely aligning you on your soul path which is fantastic I didn't even pick a card for that, did I? Let's have a look then. So for your brow chakra, what do we have? What tarot do we have for the brow? I'm getting something about romantic relationships on here as well. So it's sort of like perhaps there's some intuitive downloads coming in of like a new beginning coming in for you at this time. Ooh, okay, so we've got Nine of Swords on here. So Nine of Swords, this can be where there's a little bit of worry. So perhaps for some of you, you're still not quite trusting this. Or perhaps what you're picking up is something around you that is, maybe it's bringing you a feeling of like nightmares, um, or your dreams are feeling a little bit dark, or you're sensing something around you that's bringing you a little bit of worry. Um... I would say I've got to say something's happened here that's kind of around this center so what you've been there's been an illusion around you and that's come up a few times hasn't it on this there has been something that's been illusioned to you your intuition was spot on you knew that this was wrong. You knew that this was an illusion. However, I feel like you went ahead with the advice anyway. But it turned out that that advice actually was based around somebody else's manipulation. And it's kind of made you feel guilty. Now, you can't undo what's happened in the past. You can only learn from it, but you're kicking yourself because you actually intuitively knew it wasn't right, is what I'm getting from this. You knew it wasn't right, but you listened to it anyway. But all is not lost. It's just a lesson, okay? Take the teaching from it and move it forward, okay? Things can be rectified. Things will be rectified. And with Athala coming out in this centre, perhaps that is a lot to do with family situation as well. So this could be a family member. Um, maybe you've been told something about that person and you've acted in a way and then found out after that that was a lie or it wasn't true or something's happened around that that I'm feeling from this. Um, you, There's so much coming from this centre that's about being guided. So allow yourself to be guided, okay? Allow yourself to be guided in how to rectify this, how to move forward from this, okay? So that's what I have for you there. Now let's see what your crown centre is all about. Now the crown is our direct connection to our higher spirit, okay? So, you know, this centre, it's, it's open, constantly open. It should never be closed off because you aren't just a physical being. You have many different aspects to your being. 
let's see what we have for the crown. One yo, perfect. So what was going on in here, this illusion, this feeling of guilt, don't worry about it now because your higher spirit is telling you that it's okay, there is joy and harmony. You are aligned on your higher purpose, on this higher, higher train where you're supposed to be. You are exactly where you need to be, okay? And whatever's happened has happened, but I feel like you need to let go of the guilt now in order to, to move forward on your life path. Things have been moved out of your way for a purpose, for a good reason, because of your life purpose, okay? Because of the path that you need to take. It can be upsetting, it can be sad, but you have to leave people behind. But you know what? If they're meant to come back on your path at any point, then they will. You don't have to go searching for it or trying to make that happen, you know? Like hanging around places where you know that person might be because you feel that might align you with that person. That's not the way to do it. You go about your journey and the people that are aligned on that journey will cross your path. Okay. So let's see what is going on with your crown chakra, with the feminine oracle. What do we have here? Ooh, okay. Let me see. Doesn't want us to know, does it? Loving. Loving. Now, the snake in there is representing about shedding a skin. So this that you're holding on to from the past, the, you know, this illusion, the things that have gone on there, you've got to kind of shed that now, shed that skin and allow loving energy. So this is bringing some loving for yourself, self-love, bringing love to others. You know, I do sense and feel somebody that is constantly saying thank you for their day. Thank you for, um, it's something I like to do. I like to do that. Whoever I've been with in the day or whatever I've been doing, I like to thank them for that day. And I also like to, just say thanks in general for anything that's happened in my day, for the person that I might have met or um, the experience that I've had for that day. Spirit is constantly hearing that. And when you're giving out love, it actually, it's like that law of attraction. You will bring it back to yourself, okay? Now, you obviously don't BS yourself if you've had a really crap day. You can't be then going, oh, thank you so much for today. It's not authentic, is it? That's fake. But there must be aspects of the day or things that have happened for you that you're like, I'm really grateful that ha that happened. For instance, you might have had a shit day and, I don't know, maybe you've had a blowout on the motorway with your, your car or something like that. But you can be grateful for the AA man coming to help you. Or, you know, you can be grateful for the fact that you got to grab a cup of tea from Costa or whatever. Although it would be coffee, not tea, wouldn't it? Um, so there is... This energy of like, it doesn't matter what shit is thrown at you. It doesn't matter what's gone on throughout your day, what chaos and things like that. You're managing it, but finding the joy, finding the peace, finding the goodness in it. And I do feel like you are aligning yourself with that mindset now. You are much more aligned with that. Whereas before, I do feel for many of you, there was more of an arrogance, um you are now becoming more humble to the energy that surrounds you. Something's really humbled you on this journey. I do feel like it's something to do with what we picked up in your brow center. Oh my God. I don't think you could have better cards to be honest. You've got loving, we've got Wunyo, we've got the star. This is your wish fulfillment card. Because of the way that you've gone about things and whatever it is that you've been feeling guilty about or that you've been feeling down about, Spirit wants you to know, like, don't worry about it. We've got you. And actually, all of the work that you've done around that, you are being blessed now. This is your time for your wish to be fulfilled, okay? Um, it's a real... I love the star. You've had to grieve. You've had to let go of a lot. You've had to sort of express a lot, I feel, in this energy. But due to that, this is what you're receiving right now. It's joyful. It's happy. It's prosperous. 
And you've done that because you've gone and done the inner work. You've gone and, you know, cleaned out these centers, cleared out the stuff, the toxicity, anything that's been there, that's been festering, that's somebody else's stuff. You've kind of cut ties with those that are creating this energy for you, holding you in a place that you didn't want to be. You've done a lot of work on yourself on that. So well done you. My God, I love it. So that is working through all of your centers at this time. If any of that resonates with you and you would like to look into one of these centers a little bit deeper, then please do get in touch. I do personalized readings. I also do healing, soul regression and soul retrievals as well. Um, so do let me know if I can help you and assist you any further on your journey. And please on your way out, do like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Have a blessed day.